Today's message for all ages is a book, The Fall of Freddie the Leaf by Leo Buscaglia. Some of you might recognize that name from days of yore. <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories. Spring had passed, so had summer. Freddie the Leaf had grown large. His midsection was wide and strong, and his five extensions were firm and pointed. He had first appeared in spring as a small sprout on a rather large branch near the top of a tall tree. Freddy was surrounded by hundreds of other leaves just like himself, or so it seemed. Soon he discovered that no two leaves were alike, even though they were on the same tree. Alfred was the leaf next to him. Ben was the leaf on his right side, and Claire was the lovely leaf overhead. They had all grown up together. They had learned to dance in the spring breezes, bask lazily in the summer sun, and wash off in the cooling rains. But it was Daniel who was Freddie's best friend. He was the largest leaf on the limb and seemed to have been there before anyone else. It seemed to Freddie that Daniel was the wisest of them. It was Daniel who told them they were part of a tree. It was Daniel who explained they were growing in a public park. It was Daniel who told them the tree had strong roots hidden in the ground below. He explained about the birds who came to sit on their branch and sing morning songs. He explained about the sun, the moon, the stars, and the seasons. Freddy loved being a leaf. He loved his branch, his light, leafy friends, his place high in the sky, the wind that jostled him about, the sun rays that warmed him, the moon that covered him with soft silver shadows. Summer had been especially nice. The long, hot days felt good, and the warm nights were peaceful and dreamy. There were many people in the park that summer. They often came and sat under Freddy's tree. Daniel told him that giving shade was part of their purpose. What's a purpose? Freddy asked. A reason for being, Daniel had answered. To make things more pleasant for others is a reason to be, for being. To make shade for old people who come to escape the heat of their homes is a reason for being. To fan with our leaves the picnickers who come to eat on checkered tablecloths. These are all reasons for being. Freddie especially liked the old people. They sat so quietly on the cool grass and they hardly ever moved. They talked in whispers of times past. The children were fun, too, even though they sometimes tore holes in the bark of the tree or carved their name into it. Still, it was fun to watch them move so fast and laugh so much. But Freddy's summer soon passed. It vanished on an October night. He had never felt so cold. All of the leaves shivered with the cold. They were coated with a thin layer of white, which quickly melted and left them dew-drenched and sparkling in the morning sun. Again, it was Daniel who explained that they had experienced their first frost, the sign that it was fall and that winter would come soon. Almost at once, the whole tree, in fact, the whole park, was transformed into a blaze of color. There was hardly a green leaf left. Alfred had turned a deep yellow. Ben became a bright orange. Claire had become blazing red. Daniel, a deep maroon. And Freddie was red and gold and green. How beautiful they all looked. Freddie and his friends made their tree a rainbow. Why did we all turn different colors, Freddie asked, when we're on the same tree? Each of us is different. We've had different experiences. We have faced the sun differently. We've cast shade differently. 
Why should we not have different colors, Daniel said matter-of-factly. Daniel told Freddy that this wonderful season was called fall. One day a very strange thing happened. The same breezes that in the past had made them dance began to push and pull at their stems, almost as if they were angry. This caused some of the leaves to be torn up from their branches and swept up in the wind, tossed about and dropped to the ground. All the leaves became frightened. What's happening? They asked each other in whispers. It's what happens in fall, Daniel told them. It's time for leaves to change their home. Some people call it to die. Will we all die? Freddy asked. Yes, Daniel answered. Everything dies, no matter how big or small, no matter how weak or strong. We first do our job. We experience the sun and the moon, the wind and the rain. We learn to dance and to laugh, and then we die. I won't die, said Freddy with determination. Will you, Daniel? Yes, answered Daniel, when it's my time. When is that? asked Freddy. No one knows for sure, Daniel responded. Freddy noticed that the other leaves continued to fall. Oops. He thought it must be their time. He saw that some of the leaves lashed back at the wind before they fell, while others simply let go and dropped quietly. Soon the tree was almost bare. I'm afraid to die, Freddy said to Daniel. I don't know what's down there. We all fear what we don't know, Freddy, said Daniel. It's natural. But you were not afraid when spring became summer. You were not afraid when summer became fall. These were natural changes. Why should you be afraid of the season of death? Does the tree die too, Freddy asked. Yes, someday, said Daniel. But there is something stronger than the tree. It is life. Life lasts forever, and we are all part of life. Where will we go when we die? No one knows for sure. That's the great mystery. Will we return in the spring? We may not, but life will. Then what has been the reason for all of this? Freddy continued to question. Why are we here at all if we only have to fall and die? Daniel answered in his matter-of-fact way. It's been about the sun and the moon. It's been about happy times together. It's been about the shade and the old people and the children and the birds. It's been about colors in the fall. It's been about seasons. Isn't that enough? That afternoon, in the golden light of dusk, Daniel let go. He fell effortlessly. He seemed to smile peacefully as he fell. Goodbye for now, Freddy, he said. Then Freddy was alone the only leaf left on his branch. The first snow fell the following morning. It was soft, white, and gentle, but it was bitter cold. There was hardly any sun that day, and the day was very short. Freddy found himself losing color, becoming brittle. It was constantly cold, and the snow weighed heavily on him. At dawn, the breeze came that took Freddy from his branch. It didn't hurt at all. He felt himself float quietly and gently and softly downward. As he fell, he saw the whole tree for the first time. How strong and firm it was. He was sure that it would live for a long time, and he knew he had been a part of its life, and it made him proud. Freddy landed on a clump of snow. It somehow felt soft and even warm. In this new position, he was more comfortable than he'd been in a long time. It seemed to him he closed his eyes 
and fell asleep. He did not know that spring would follow winter and that the snow would melt into water. He did not know that what appeared to be his useless and dried self would join with the water and serve to make the tree stronger. Most of all, he did not know that there, deep asleep in the tree and the ground, were already plans for the new leaves in the spring. The beginning.